Warning. This show contains adult political themes and language. Liberals and little children should cover their ears. Welcome to Liberty Never Sleeps, where negativity never sounded so good. No, 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 no. Now here's your host, Thomas Purcell. We don't talk about. All right. Laz and I have discussed uh, instituting an award that we're going to call Miss Baloney Arms, <laughs> and we're going to have a number of nominees. And then when we decide, we're going to announce who Miss Baloney Arms of 2015 oh, is, phantom. we're going to send her that award. Now, the Miss Baloney Arms contest, there were a couple of qualifications to be considered for Miss Baloney Arms 2015. I would welcome you email me, Tom at Liberty Never Sleeps, or tweet me at Lotus Tom, or post on our Facebook. I'll, I'll make a, a, you know, a, a choice of nominees who you think should be Miss Baloney Arms 2015. They, they have to be female, <clears throat> feminist, liberal, mm -hmm. and preferably, although that's not a big factor, they have to have huge baloney arms. They, <laughs> they have to they have to be rather uh, well appointed. And I'll put a list of the nominees up in the next few days. I'm sure and you And then will. we're going to announce it at the end of the year of who should be Miss Baloney Arms 2015. And it's going to be a nice award. It's going to be like a crystal baloney. You know, oh. and I'll have Liberty Never Sleeps to that. And we'll send it with a nice letter. Oh, we've, we've, some... we've tossed about a maybe, gift certificate. Yeah, a gift certificate to, let's say, all you can eat buffet. All you can eat buffet somewhere. We'll, that, that would be mostly appropriate. And, and then we'll issue that. At, at, and, and every year we're going to do that. Now, to give you an idea of, of who we think would be a Miss Good Baloney Arms, the Miss Baloney Arms from 2014, which we talked mm -hmm. As Miss Baloney Arms 2014. So she's out of the running for 2015. So I know a lot of you would like to give it to her, but she got it for 2000. For my favorite for 2015 is Amy Schumer. But yes. we're going to put, we're going to put a list up. I think, I think we should leave it to our listeners to decide who should be Miss Baloney Arms 2015. <laughs> the other thing is, um, I, I read a story on about Fandango, which is the, a resource that theaters use to sell tickets ahead of time. Right. Previously, the number one uh, movie that people bought pre-sale tickets for was Twilight. Right. Uh, the tickets, the tickets uh, for those movies typically go on sale for the six weeks, and in the six-week period, they sold like a million dollar a lot of a lot of tickets. Okay, mm -hmm. it's the number one of all time pre-sale and tickets. Give you an idea. The first day, they sold eight times as many tickets as the Twilight series. The first day. First day. The wow. movie has already made, as of now, approximately $25 million. Wow. It's, it's an unbelievable number. I mean, it's no kid. It, not only is it number one, it's number one by far. Yeah, no kidding. It, it's no, there's no doubt in my mind that – the Star Star Wars: The Force Awakens is going to be the biggest movie of all time, right. and will break any record that was set in the first weekend easily. Every right. IMAX theater in the country opening day has been booked for this movie. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you if you go see an IMAX movie on December eighteenth, it's got to be Star Wars. Every theater is booked out. Right. I checked the local theaters here. And they have approximately 50 to 70 percent of their their screens booked for Star, Star Wars. Wars. In, the, in other words, when you go there, there's going to be like four options or five options on a, on a 10 movie theater right. to 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 see this movie. They, they, you know, there's been this panic. Oh, get your tickets now! Get your tickets now! Don't worry about it. They're, they'll have theaters. You know, there aren't yeah. that many people in the world. My question is this: December 18th comes along. How many businesses? Are going to be affected by people calling out sick. Yeah, no kidding. I, I really, when you got that many people going to see something, and are and I'm sure they're going to take the day off. That it's going to be a zoo. I would imagine they'll sell out like at the seven o'clock and eight o'clock, and everybody most. They're people, going to call it the Phantom Flu. Yeah, but I think a lot of people are going to call in are calling sick for the stupid thing. Anyway, so I wrote. I I, I saw this building. In social media, I saw this hysteria building in, in social media, and I'm a huge fan of it anyway. And I got to tell you, I watched that video, and it moved me. 
just no. the trailer. It really did. I, I, I was – because it brought back – you know, a little part of your youth gets recaptured when you catch these trailers because I saw it in 1977, the summer of 77. I had just moved to California. My parents had just moved. I was a kid then. And I saw Star Wars not on opening weekend, like a couple months later. It was mm-hmm. – I think it opened in June, and I saw it in August, right? Okay. Because I lived a little bit out of town. Right. And they, had a, they had a local theater. They didn't have big multiplexes back in that day. They right. had a, a local theater, and it was uh, booked up, and I got to see it. I paid three bucks, and I got to see it over and over again the first day mm-hmm. that, that, that it was showing at that theater. It was, it was something like eight weeks in, but they, that was back in the day. You could buy a ticket to a movie theater. Mm-hmm. And you could stay, mm-hmm. you know, for, and, and I did. And oh, kicked, yeah. Yeah, they kicked me out at like 8 o'clock when the evening crowd started to, no to line up. You yeah. stayed, how many times did you see it? Oh, I, the first day, the first time I saw it was probably four times. No kidding. I, I went to see it like at the first showing, mm-hmm. and I saw it like four times in a row. And then they, they kick us out. Yeah. As a, as a matter of fact, or a fact, after the second or third time I caught it back then, no, back then. <laughs> back then. I grew up nasty, but back then I was a good <laughs> Anyway, so I so it I wrote the article and yet it's editorial, it's on libertyneversleeps.com. Right? And there has been this uh, people have just said, Oh, I'm not a fan of the movie, and so I don't get it, like you, you know. And I said, There's more going on to it than the being a fan of the movie. Mm-hmm. You got to understand where we were in 1977. The, the country was just come out of Vietnam. Right. Jimmy Carter was president, and people weren't too thrilled with him. And you, do you remember Carter's malaise speech? That would, you know, he, he talked about there's a general malaise in this country, and we need to do something about it. That kind of thing. Mm-hmm. The, he was right in the sense that the country was questioning where it was. And right. it, where its place in the world was. Mm-hmm. They, we had been told for years at that point, you know, America sucks. The whole America sucks thing was starting back then and right. was, was gaining traction. Movie At the movies, every time you saw a movie, they were flawed heroes and anti-heroes. That mm-hmm. was the big thing. I mean you had movies like right. Taxi, uh, Taxi Driver and Midnight Cowboy and Coming Home. Mm-hmm. Which talked about you know a broken America and that kind of thing. Right. People had lost faith. Yep. And there was something about the movie at the time, and I, I remember the discussions at the time. They said, "Wow, this movie is awful, really." When you, when you examine Star Wars as a script, mm-hmm. it, it's terrible. But it captured something. It it brought back the romantic medieval uh, story, which is really what it is. It's a classic romance story and when i talk about romance i don't mean you know between main characters having Mm -hmm. making lovers it it, romantic movies in the sense that when you talk about literary has certain epic styles and usually a narrative going on and a thread and whatever star wars fit that it was the first movie in a long time that people got to see that had that kind of a storyline and i think people now need it again that because the the America's again once again being attacked by its own people, that it's not that great, it's not that good, and and really the movies have kind of lent themselves again to that, mm-hmm. with the exception of the Marvel movies, and I think that's what made Captain America so popular, and I think that's what's moving people on this new Star Wars trailers. They remember a time when everything was better and everything mm-hmm. was greater and in the trailer talks about the legendary status of these characters being forgotten that's really it looks sounds like the plot of the movie and at the, it kind of you know bring, people are are in tune with that and and sympathize with that and i think that's what Thank you.